Hello, everybody. It's your boy, once again, Sam, AKA the train mother main. My joiners and bloiners and goiners and hoiders. So it's uh, another Saturday. Um, and again, just like most Saturdays, if you don't like my intro, I don't know what to tell you. I wish I could help you, but I can't. But I'm very glad that you're here. So let's jump right in. Um, again, it's uh, another Saturday, another crappy weather Saturday, rain. I don't know what it is, but the past four weekends are supposed to be the beginning of spring, lightweight, and it's been nothing but cold and rain, some snow. So perfect time to work on the layout. Um, as I've said in this new layout series, I'm documenting more so as I go. So most of the videos you've seen have been over um, a day or two versus just, you know, me telling you what I've done since the last time I made a video. So I'm keeping with that today as I'm making some more progress. Um, so again, I'm using my tripod, trying to go slow. I'm doing moving shots now, but I will be mounting the tripod in a little bit as I work. Um, so what I've done that you haven't seen so far is start to lay out some, it doesn't look like it right now, but start to lay out some of my flex track to get a feel for what I want my industry tracks to look like down here in the lumber mill. Um, I've also used some scrap masonite that I just put in place to get a feel for the height of the backdrop as well as the front fascia. Um, put some foam out on the layout to get some perspective and uh, same thing down here with the mine, trying to get like a, a loose outline of where uh, tracks and whatnot are going to go. So my goal today, what I'm working on, just started working on right now actually is, um, the main line is glued all the way around. The branch line is not. Um, I've worked in where I want the mine lead to be with this Pico number six right here. Um, and then the same thing, if you could see perspective wise, down here with the lumber yard lead, which is gonna be a little longer. Also like more so like an interchange track as well. So I'm just begun splicing this track. I'm gonna get these turnouts in or worked in, and then I'm going to uh, glue down the branch line or the secondary main, passing main, um, so the goal is if I can get that glued down and set here in the next couple hours, it's still morning time, I can probably get these wired up too. So then all I'll have to do, um, is get the industry tracks in, which I'm not going to do for a while. So, so with these Pico turnouts, I don't know how close up I can be, but that's probably about close enough. Um, you can see I've taken my X-Acto knife down here. And I've prepared the turnout ahead of time. I cut off the ties so that I can slip joiners on there. And I save all of the ties that I cut off, which I've shown you before. And I'm going to use them to slip in the gaps once I actually go to uh, paint and weather the track. So that is prepared. And then where I spliced into this um, uh, passing siding or branch line or whatever you want to call it, um, I'm going through now and preparing the track as well to receive rail joiners. So that will go here. So now we have this section. We need to cut off some ties. And I'm just going to do all this for you. Because I used my Zuron rail nippers, which are super handy. These were about 15 bucks, but they'll last forever. And they cut flush. Always use the flat side towards the rail that, uh, the side of the rail that you wanna keep, because as you can see, it cuts perfectly flat. If you use the other side, that's a little more jagged and you'll have to cut again anyway. So um, just one nice squeeze and there you go. So I've already cut these sections. So now what I need to do is, you can see that the ties go right up to the edge of the rail. Even though this section has been cut already, this is how they come brand new as well. So I'm going to cut off this first tie with my X-Acto knife. And I do it down here on my stool instead of on the layout because I don't want to cut into the foam. So hang on.
So I've cut it and then it'll just slide right off and I can save both of those. So now it's ready for joiners. So I'm going to slide these back on where they belong. I've already cut the length of the turnout into the gap. Slide this back on over here. And this turnout, you can see there's no joiners on there yet, but it fits in there perfectly. So what I'm gonna do now is I have a box of joiners. One thing I had never considered, and I'm an idiot for it, is you know how, let me get a couple out. These joiners come attached like a stick style, and I would always do the bendy trick to break them in half, but I saw somebody do it, I think it was Ron's Trains and Things, I saw Ron use his rail nippers to just cut these, and I still had eight or 10 times four, so they come in strips of four ahead, eight or 10 strips of four still in here, and I just went through and cut them all. It took 10 minutes, but now my joiners are ready to use at will. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide joiners onto the turnout. So there you have it. We've got joiners on all three ends. I like to put the joiners on the turnouts instead of on the track because then I can slide the track into the turnout instead of having to force the turnout because obviously there's parts on here I don't want to break. Uh, moving around a piece of track is much easier than a turnout. So make sure you can see this. It's already good on this side. And like I said, it's easier for me to wiggle and bend the flex track than to try to force the turnout in place. So I've already got it connected right here. And I can just, you know, kink that if I need to. If I try to kink the turnout like that, I'm going to bend the points, could bend the frog, could break the spring in the throw. And so, like I said, I cut it down to, let me just show you. Let me show you. I cut the flex track to the perfect length. You can see that without it being in the joiners yet. That's what makes the rail nippers so handy. So... I'm ready to glue down this branch line, which I'm going to do now. Have to pull everything up and then put it all back, but that's okay because I know it all fits. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll get a wide view of me gluing stuff down and I will just time lapse it just for the sake of catching it all on video. So the main line's complete. The branch line will be complete and I'm not gonna do any industry track work for some time until I get the back drop in and start figuring out exactly how I want the landscape to look. And then I'm gonna build it around this, but I know this is long enough of a lead for me. And then uh, same thing right here. I want this one to be a little bit longer and the more sloping hillside that'll come up to it and it'll just run along until it opens up a little more right around here somewhere, shape this in very broad and it'll have the nice little lumber mining yard. So I'm gonna do that. So hang tight, let me find a good vent vantage point so as you can see excuse my saturday morning hair but um, as you can see this is one of the reasons why i like to keep my layout as clean as possible i know there's some track here that i was working with but when i go and try to accomplish something there's really nothing in my way i have the tools out that i need i do have these locos here that i was running this morning but that's fine uh, but my work area is complete and clean and ready for this project. So um, I already have the, uh, off the turnouts, I already have this wired, which you saw me do in a previous video. And I had them glued down to where these blue lines are so that uh, everything stayed in place once it was wired, but that I had wiggle room when I go to actually, uh, I anticipated that when I would go to glue down the rest of the branch line, um, that uh, I would have some play to um, you know, fit everything in properly. I did the same thing down here, which you saw again. So I wired the off the turnout in and then another blue line and left some wiggle room. So from here to here is one long piece of track. Um, so I'm going to glue and then put it all in and then uh, use my uh, nails and some weight to put it in place, so. I'm just using white glue like I always have. It dries clear. You do not need much. 
Um, I just get a little tiny bead on most of the ties, just one long uh, run and it sticks. And it's easy to pull back up just with your fingers. You don't need a shim. It's not caulk or uh, Gorilla Glue or anything like that. So. so I just wanted to show you even just, there's a little more there than I even want, but just a little tiny line right underneath the ties and that'll keep it down perfectly. And like I said, then I can just pull it right up with a finger if I ever needed to. Once it's ballasted and uh, scenic in, that's a different story, but for the sake of I'm finishing up my track plan for now, it'll work fine. So back to the time lapse. As I was just setting the camera up again for the long view, uh, the tripod's sitting about a foot from the far end of the layout, but I looked at the viewfinder just to see if I had everything in perspective. And you can see how long this layout is, which I really, really enjoy. Got a nice long run and plenty of room for industries with the scenics in the middle. It's just under 16 feet, 15 foot, eight and a half rough inches. So you can see this, uh, it's a shelf layout, 24 inches wide, but it's long. And if I ever want to go this way or that way, I've got all the room in the world to do so. Um, so I've got glue on the table. So what I'm going to do now is go from either end. I'll start here, lay a couple, start there, lay a couple. And I want to eyeball this and tack it in with my little flathead nails. Tack it in and hold it down straight. Um, I know some people... I mean, I guess I used to. Some people want to use a straight edge and make it look perfectly straight. Uh, I don't think that's super realistic. It's never going to be a thousand percent straight, even in real life. Rails are like spaghetti, um, but close enough to straight is fine um, in my book. So uh, I don't want any crazy kinks or wobbles or things that are going to make the cars go uh, insane, for lack of a better term. But close enough to straight with some variation, you know. One thing I also want to do as I'm doing this is I'm going to take two cars and put them on either rail and make sure that my spacing is proper. So as I'm straightening it and keeping it in place, I'm going to run these cars uh, parallel to make sure that they're not touching or that the space is improper. I want it to be as close to uniform throughout as possible. All right, well, it doesn't take too long, but you want to take your time and do it right. As you can see, I'm using these little flathead nails. I jam them down there to the tie. The track does not move. I put them down every, you know, 10 inches, 8 to 10 inches, and then definitely before and after turnouts. Like I said, I don't glue these down, but I want it to be stable here and here as much as possible. And as I had said, I save all my ties. Sorry, I'm trying to focus so that when I go and I'm ready to ballast and weather and paint and um, I'll slide all the ties back in here. So it's pretty close. It's about as close as I want it to be. You can see there's some gradual, you know, spaghetti curves, but that's just how real life is. You also saw me work with my two passenger cars to make sure that the distance between the rails was pretty close to uniform throughout the entire way down. So I think, uh, Next is to put a little bit of weight on these and we will let them dry. So you might have seen me do this on uh, some previous videos on this layout, other layouts that I've done. But my favorite thing to do for weighing down track when I glue it is railroad spikes. You can find them anywhere. If you go walk a mile of even brand new railroad, you're going to find spikes along the right of way. I don't condone stealing them, but if you grab five or six when you're out, there's five or six thousand more uh, that were not picked up. So. They fit perfectly, end scale at least, between the rail heads and weigh just enough to where you're not going to warp the track, but will definitely help the glue dry. I mean, look at that, and it looks cool. It's functional, railroad, helping railroad. So I'm a big fan of those. And so there you have it for now. Um, this is all going to dry and get ready to be uh, tested. Uh, obviously, once I pull these off, I will run a consist through the branch line, make sure everything is smooth. I know all the joiners and gaps in the track are proper because I checked before I put them back in. Um, so we'll run a train through it, make sure the consists all get through smooth for 10 minutes. And then um, I will solder some of these joiners together where uh, appropriate. And then um, hopefully by tonight, I can wire up these turnouts so it's much later in the day. Uh, that was early morning when I 
did all of that and now it is uh, mid to late afternoon. Um, the glue has dried over the last six hours. I pulled out the nails and took off the weights. Everything is in place and nice. Um, before I turned the camera on, I already ran the train through a few times and everything seems to be going smoothly, which is nice. Um, so what I'm going to do now is solder the joiners together. Um, aside from at the ends of the switches, I might do that at a later date, but I want to ensure that this is all uh, one long piece of track now. Like I said, aside from at the nose and tail end of the turnouts. Um, and I was going to wire uh, for DCC, obviously here, and then the potential, uh, or not potential, it will eventually be a lead here. But I'm gonna do that another day once I get the leads actually in. Um, I don't really feel like having wires hanging with nowhere to go yet. It'll just be easier for me to uh, come back once I know exactly where things are gonna be, get these tracks and same thing down on the uh, lumber yard side. Once these tracks are in and glued, then I'll just go ahead and wire it all up at once, which will be another video. And uh, just makes more sense to do it all at one time, tinning several wires together, drilling more holes um, and testing it all. There's no point to do it now. So um, again, everything's running pretty smoothly. I will, uh, show you soldering these joiners together and uh, I guess that'll be it for now but I have another milestone accomplished so the main line including the branch line um, I guess after I solder those joints will be a continuous circuit um, it's wired for DCC and uh, we are just waiting to uh, finalize our track plan as far as what we want the industries to look like which is going to be down the ways a bit um, the next couple videos I'm thinking will be uh, getting the backdrop installed for sure will be my next major move. And then uh, probably do the phasia in the same video. Might make those two videos, who knows, we'll see what happens. Um, and then from there probably start to work in uh, just some rough landscaping, um, which will at that point, uh, you know, determine how I want things to look. So like I said, I'm documenting this layout. <clears throat> you know, uh, infinite amount times more than the previous layouts, uh, filming as I go. So um, I think this video, including the how to wire for DCC, this is, uh, by the time you see this, this will be the sixth or seventh video of this layout. I think on the previous layout, I only had seven or eight. And then on the mega layout, I worked on that for a long time, but I was only doing a video every like month, month and a half. So um, even in its infancy, you're getting a lot more. I find it more helpful to look back and uh, see what other people have done uh, in previous builds and going back two, three years on the same layout. So um, let me go ahead and solder these joints together. I'll talk a little more and then we'll uh, call it a day. So. so again, on this branch line, power for DCC right here. And then we'll come down, I'm trying to go slow because I'm holding the tripod. I'm not gonna solder at the turnouts yet. Um, I also have not soldered the turnouts to get off the main onto the branch line. Everything else is around the whole layout, except here. Um, I will do those all at one time once the layout's completely wired and been tested. Um, solder this joiner right here, this joint I should say. We will again skip this and then there's two in here that I'm going to have to do right here and then actually no there is not another one down here. And again, I'm skipping this. Uh, it is wired down here on both ends. So it should be easy. 30 seconds of soldering and then uh, we'll be done for the day. All right, so this should be nice, quick and easy. Got my iron heated up. Always do the outside of the rails. So I got two joints here to do. And then right here, so this should be nice and quick. I always, you've seen me do this now several times, but it's worth showing again in case this is the first time you've seen my videos. So you can see now, I've already soldered the main line in the foreground before, and then the rear, the branch line. You can't even tell that they're there. And then I always, uh, you've seen me do this before, take my little jeweler file. It has different uh, size of files on either end. Just run over the tops of the rails real quick. Make sure nothing got inside the flangeways, which it looks good. 
Um, so I guess that's really it for now. These are dry, trains run through, been tested, turnouts are in, so now I can begin to work off the main line. Like I said, landscaping, backdrop, and phasia are next. You can start to work in some of this stuff roughly uh, once that's done. Start doing some industry design and uh, we'll keep rolling from there. So please uh, subscribe. Uh, if you like the channel, please like the videos. Even if you just want to say hello or um, that you hate me or that you love me or have questions, tips and tricks, Tony Hawk style, please comment, interact. Um, it definitely helps the algorithms. Um, I just hit a thousand subscribers uh, and I started this in 2014, the channel. So it took a long time, but thank you all very much. Um, stick around. We'll be back soon. And uh, I appreciate everything. So the train main is out. All right, peace. Thank you.